good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Professor David J. Pilosres, an electrical engineer profession and former head of electrical engineering of a school somewhere in Asia. Okay, uh, good afternoon. My lesson for this afternoon will be lesson number 90 under my channel. The topic is integral calculus. The subtopic is length of arcs. The main topic for this afternoon under uh, this length of arcs is the length of transmission line. How to compute the length of transmission line in real life. Okay, uh, let's proceed. I uh, will try to read the problem. <clears throat> Find the length of the transmission line. If the distance between the towers is uh, 20 meters and on a level ground, meaning the transmission towers are on, are on a level ground, if the sod at the middle is 2 meters. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the figure. We, we got the ground level. This is the first uh, transmission tower. This is the second transmission tower. And if we connect the transmission line between these two towers, this is the transmission line, the one in red. Okay? And the distance between the towers is 20 meters. So this is 10 meters. This is 10 meters. Considering the uh, middle portion, supposed to be uh, between the two towers, uh, they are both symmetrical. This is 10 meters, 10 meters. And the sag at the middle, if we try to draw a horizontal line here, the sag at the middle, middle, middle rather, will be 2 meters. The, the problem is, what will be the total length of the transmission line? So, if you are the project engineer, you specify the distance between the towers, and you specify the sag supposed to be at the middle to be 2 meters, the problem is, how uh, I call this? Uh, what will be the total length of the transmission line headed? It's supposed to be if this is uh, 20 meters. Uh, you will not just connect 20 meters because whether you like it or not, will, there will be a sag at the middle. So if there is a sag at the middle, the total length of the transmission line will be a little bit longer than 20 meters. So we expect that the total length of the transmission line for this problem here is more than 20 meters. Okay, let's proceed with the solution. Solution. x square equal to 4py. Uh, that is a parabola opening upwards. It is a parabola opening upwards. Okay, why x square? Because for uh, if you compute for the value of uh, what do you call this? Uh, if you put the value of y here, then try to compute for the value of x. X will be a quadratic equation, meaning uh, there is an x on the right, there is an x on the left. So whether we like it or not, the parabola should be opening upward. This is the graph. It is same as the configuration of the transmission line. Okay? It should be a parabola opening upwards. Okay? That is this equation here. So to compute for the length of the transmission line, uh, we work on this uh, equation here. Okay? At the location t, uh, 10 and 2, this point here. With respect to the x-axis and y-axis, you assume during the meantime that this is the y-axis. The x-axis coincides with the vertex of the transmission line. And considering this one here, the coordinate of this one will be 10 and 2. So if we know a point on the parabola, then we try to substitute it. We could determine the equation of the parabola. Oh, that is analytic geometry. So at the location 10 and 2, meaning if the abscess is 10 and the height is 2, this point here, okay, this is the abscess is 10, okay, the height is 2 with respect to the x-axis. Uh, the horizontal line, it, it is not this one, it, it is this, okay, 
So at the location t and two, how we try to substitute this value of uh, x and y back to this equation here? Okay, we will determine the characteristic of the parabola. So ten square will be equal to four p times two. Solving for four p, it will be one hundred over two. Four p will be fifty. Meaning, uh, for this uh, problem here, the value of four p for the required parabolic equation is uh, fifty. So if we now try to go back to this equation here, x squared now will be equal to 4p times y. We now know 4p from our computation. It's 50, so this is 50y. Okay, then we try to solve for y in terms of x. Uh, because uh, y as a function of x, uh, that is what we need to compute for the total length. Uh, why is that so? From the previous discussion, the length of an arc is actually equal to the square root of 1 plus dy over dx quantity square times dx. We are to integrate with respect to x, so, so it is a mass that we will try to compute dy dx quantity square as a function of your x. So we are now given y to be 1 over 50x squared, taking the first derivative, dy dx will be 1 over 25 times x, Squaring both sides, we need the square value. dy dx quantity square is equal to the square of this, x square over 6 to 5. So we go back to the this equation here. Okay? Differential length of arc for this problem equal to the square root of 1 plus uh, x square over 6 to 5. And if we try to simplify this one, 6 to 5 is a perfect square. It could come out from the radical side. This should be 1 over 25. What remains under the radical will be x squared plus 6 to 5 times the duration of x, all quantity. Okay? And if we try to solve for the total length of the transmission line, we integrate both sides. Right? Uh, this falls under the powers of trigonometric function. We pass by the complicated solution of problems under integration, under powers of trigonometric function. So we will let x square equal to 6 to 5 tangent square of theta. Perfect square, perfect square, perfect square. Take the square root. x now will be 25 tangent of theta. Taking differential, dx will be 25. The differential of tangent is second square of theta, differential theta. Oh, we need this value here. Because uh, this value. Because we will go back over here. Then from here, we could compute for the value of tangent of theta. Tangent of theta will be x over 25. Later on, we need this value of tangent of theta. We'll try to so compute for the value of the square root of x squared plus 6 to 5 separately to be more systematic. So this should be 6 to 5 tangent square of theta plus 6 to 5. Uh, you factor out 6 to 5. The remaining quantity will, will, will be 1 plus tangent square. 1 plus tangent square is second square, okay? Then taking the square root, the square root of 6 to 5 will be 25. The square root of second square of theta will be second of theta. So if we go, uh, we try to go back here, differential length of arc for the given problem equal to, I am following this, 1 over 25. The square root in terms of theta is 25 second of theta, it is this. Okay, times uh, the value of the x, 25 second square of theta, the pressure of theta. I think 1... 25 will cancel out. So d, ds as a function of theta will be 25 second cube of theta differential theta. Actually, this is a complicated problem. Uh, you should try to evaluate this one by using powers of trigonometric function. Powers. We pass by that one. Okay, I will not show you the solution, but uh, we have solved this one already under powers of trigonometric functions. The resulting integral of this, if we try to take the integral of this, okay, forget for the meantime the 25, later on we will uh, place it. The integral of second cube of theta, differential theta, if you try to use powers of trigonometric functions, this should be one half second of theta, tangent of theta, plus one half the natural logarithm of second of theta plus tangent of theta. Uh, we need second and tangent, then the sum of second and tangent, okay. So I place it here, this is the value of tangent of theta. This is the value of second of theta derived from this. 
Second theta tangent of theta, this is the volume. Okay. Second theta plus tangent of theta. Uh, where is it? This is the value. Therefore, the total integral now. Okay, uh, let's proceed with the total integration. Differential length of R over 2. Why over 2? Okay, uh, we use symmetry, guys. Uh, dx will just move from 0 to 10 to cover up uh, one half of the length, right? So to compute for the total distance, we will just multiply it by 2 or we will divide it by 2. Okay? Differential length of arc of the transmission line over 2 equal to, we are following this, 25. Uh, we got a 1 half on the integration of this, so I bring it out. So this is a common factor, right? 1 half times second theta tangent of theta is this. Second of theta plus tangent of theta is this. But this is with the natural law. The limit now is from 0 to 10. So this should be these two here cancel with this. So there is a 25 here. Okay. Upper limit minus lower limit. Okay, guys, use a rough trap. Try to place the upper limit separately. Try to compute. You're using your calculator. What will come out will be 0 0.4.04. For the lower limit, we all x uh, place it as 0. Use a rough drop, use your calculator, try to compute for the value of what will come out here. I didn't show you, but I, I, I've uh, done this on my rough drop. The value of the lower limit will be 3.2. So S now will be 25. The difference of this is 0 0.84. 25 times 0 0.84. It is exactly, exactly 21 meters. Sorry for that one. It is 21 meters, guys. So, meaning to say, uh, the graph is something like this. Um, right? So, this is 21 meters. 10 meters. This is 10 meters. And this, I got the middle is 2 meters. So what you need for the length of the transmission line will be 21 meters. The distance between transmission line is 20 meters. It the second the middle is 2 meters. Okay, guys, that's the importance of integral calculus under the computation of length of arcs. So I told you before, this is a requirement for electrical engineers in the length of the calculation of transmission line length. Okay, good afternoon, Los Angeles.